Howdy everyone and welcome back to the Linux Geeks Out channel. Now, before we hop into the whole reaction portion, there are a few things I want to say real quick. One is I am going to try to stick to the schedule I've been mentioning for these new releases that I'm trying to get through for a while now, which is one basically every other day. Now, I did some math and I, let me say, I am not good with numbers. They get in my mind and stop making sense. So, um, I very well could be wrong on this math, but that is basically three reactions a week. And I did the math, and I have, at the moment, at the moment, I have 18 tracks on the list. That would, uh, take ooh, six weeks, I think the math was, to complete. So that's a little over a month, that's, uh, well, that's about a month and a half. If new releases keep coming out, I think we'll be done with these, um... With these new releases in three months time, which seems like a while away, but I would say that is actually pretty good right there. So, anyways, anyways, my point in all that is, uh, if we stick with the schedule, it shouldn't actually take too long to get through all these new releases, which means I'll be able to get back to the request, which I'm really excited about, because that's how I really discover new stuff these days, is, um requests from folks on on this channel I've discovered so many good bands that way so i'm excited to eventually be getting back to that and the second thing and I'm, i know i'm going on a bit of a tangent here i'll hop into the reaction soon as of filming i am starting up school again or roll college again tomorrow so by the time this goes live which will hopefully be tomorrow if i can edit it, it edit it tonight and everything um anyways anyways by the time this goes live, I will have started classes back and everything, which you would think would make it a bit harder to make content, but I think having that consistent schedule in my life is really going to help me continue to put this out consistently as well, especially because I'll actually have more time in the day and everything. But anyways, anyways, yeah, um, class is starting up, gonna try to stick with a two-day schedule, all that. I think that's everything I wanted to say. So, let's get into the actual reaction. Today we are checking out Testify by Void Morning Final, mor or Morning Finale, I, I don't, I don't know actually how you would say that, uh, featuring, f featuring, uh, Hushikuma Manami, who y'all may know from both Death Neon and Wagamama Rocky. Oh, she's one of my favorite vocalists, so I've been looking forward to checking this one out for a while. It comes from the soundtrack of the mobile game Archaea, which I'll talk about that a little bit uh, in the lyrical analysis section because that becomes relevant to what I'm going to be talking about there. But anyways, anyways, enough rambling. I'm excited about this, so let's hop into it. Oh, so I have no idea what sort of, uh, what sort of style this is going to be. Okay, so we're getting some... Okay, uh, we're getting some electronic elements. Is that a screen in the background? Nice. Yeah, electronic elements, uh, choir, there's some, some, some symphonic stuff. So this is right up my alley here. Sort of a fast-moving piano. Sort of reminiscent of, um... Well, there's some, like, classical composer reminds me of, but it... I thought it's specifically reminding me of... Uh, Tijin Church, if y'all know that project. It's pretty cool so far. Getting sounds like some proper drums in there now. Nice. I do wish the vocals were a bit higher in the mix. Some good bass right there. I was not expecting that. Oh, hard. Okay, I'm. Yeah, this is, uh. 
not what I expected at all, but I'm really liking this. It's, um... Okay. <laughs> what's, what's, what are we about to get here? I have no idea what's happening in this song at all, but I'm really liking it. Okay, uh, ending a little rough. I, th I think I needed just a bit more right there at the end. Yeah, that was not what I was expecting at all, but I quite enjoyed that. I I, I think. Definitely. If I had been making it, I I would I would have done a few things differently. But also, I wouldn't I would not have made that at all. So I'm, <laughs> that's not really a tangent worth going on. But yeah, that was that was solid. That was solid. Uh, but yeah, lyrical analysis time. Uh, so it's time for a tangent. I do that a lot in these videos, and it's time for another good one. So when I in the past have not really done lyrical analysis it has been for one of three reasons the most common is such as i don't really have much to talk about be it i just can't decipher anything or here's something more in the lines of like pump it by electric cover it's a silly workout song what's there to decipher with that you know what's there to dive into the second reason which is also fairly common doesn't happen quite as often but is so you know, it, sort of an expected thing to happen is if the song is not in English and um, I can't find a translation because I if I can find lyrics I could put it through Google Translate and I'll often do that just to make sure it's not you know the kind of content that I don't really want to put out there with the stuff I'm making but I don't really trust that for diving into it so I will choose not to analyze anything in that instance and the final one which is quite a rarity is the fact that it's an instrumental song, which has happened twice so far, I do believe, with um the uh, Sleep Token drum playthroughs. But anyways, the, I've in the past really I've I've kind of become comfortable with not analyzing lyrics, and I really I want I want to stop doing that. That is a thing that I enjoy doing. I enjoy diving into stuff, even if I don't have all that much to talk to. Which brings us to today, because this is a weird instance of where it's not, there's not really much to dive into. There is a lot to dive into. And I haven't the slightest idea of what's going on. Because right off the bat, here's where our stuff is going to come back to this being from Archaea. Which, again, I hope I am saying right. So, I looked at the site linked in the description and everything, and it seems Archaea is a mobile rhythm game. Which is... Mobile games and rhythm games, I don't really do either. I did for a while play Iron Maiden's mobile game, which is actually surprisingly high quality. But I don't really do mobile gaming. Uh, so this is something I never really would have stumbled across otherwise. Um, but my phone doesn't really have space on it, so I can't install the game and give it a shot and see if it's any good. But, you know, it looks like anime rhythm game. If the rest of the soundtrack is banging as this track was, then hey, might be right up my alley. Who knows? <laughs> but, um, I don't know if there's a plot or anything. So, there is very much the possibility that this song sort of ties into some story being told with this game. Don't ask me if it is, I don't know. But, I am getting weird sort of mixed interpretations here because I'm getting a lot of stuff of a very 
sort of classic, in a sense, cliche, but I don't quite want to say that it's that often has negative connotations. And I, I want to describe this as a cliche. It's, it's, very kind of, it's more a trope than anything else, I suppose. Uh, sort of a relationship that is falling apart uh, or has fallen apart. Everything like that, which as I was thinking about this, I listen to a lot of stuff that's about that. Like, it's weirdly common in everything I listen to. So that's just strange how that became a thing, I guess. But uh, the other thing is there's a whole lot of fantasy stuff. Things like Darkest Night, I'll confront you here. Um, uh, such a destiny was not desired. It actually ties into both. But I feel like when I hear destiny, I often think kind of fantasy stuff. That is a bit... It feels like it comes up in fantasy a lot. Um, what am I carrying out in this Horizon of Despair? Horizon of Despair sounds like such a fantasy location name, you know, or something like that. Um, da -da -da. I mean, there's just different stuff in here that just... I get very heavy, sort of rich, like, classic kind of fantasy vibes. I'm talking like... I don't even know what type of fantasy I'm talking, like... Stuff that's more fantasy than Lord of the Rings, almost. Like, I get that kind of vibe from it. And, I don't know, I just, I can't figure out exactly what to do with all of this. I think it would be interesting to look at it through the lens of both of those. But without the broader context of the game, and without uh, the broader context of the rest of the game's music, I have no idea what to do. And, uh, yeah, I think if, if it is sort of uh, looking at it through the lens of a relationship, it's definitely, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty not great. At, uh, I would say that the relationship was not great, perhaps holding the, uh, holding the narrator, if you will, back, um, and, but, uh, now that it's gone, they, re they really feel sort of the impact of also the emptiness of it it's like it's gone they have all this freedom now but it um they don't they don't know what to do now that this large part of them is gone and if it's the fantasy thing honestly i don't know what to say at all about that because i'm not cut out for that stuff there's a reason i don't really talk about the lyrics with love bites because that's all just fun fantasy stuff and i don't know what to do with that so yeah um there's something to talk about here but i sure as heck don't know what it is so i normally say this kind of thing at the end but if y'all have any insight into this put it down in the comments because i honestly would love to know what folks have to say about about sort of the meaning of this song but yeah i think that's really all i have to say on that i don't have a good segue so um music uh, review time, uh, yeah, um, so, uh, da, 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 I'll start off with the vocals, right off the bat, they needed to be higher in the mix, I, I will go ahead and say that, they need, they need to be much more apparent, they, they sounded quite nice, I would say this was one of the weaker deliveries I have heard, uh, from her, uh, Probably in the same vein as, um, she's got a solo track called Crypot, which I love the vibe of, but the vocals just don't, don't quite hit right in that one, until about the second verse. And it was the same thing here, just that just, they weren't quite there, they were nice, they, they, just there's something about the sound of her voice that just, I, I absolutely love it, I could not for the life of me say what it is about her voice, but it, just, it, it really, it resonates with me, you know? And that was there, but there's something that just wasn't quite there with this, and I think the mix did play a large part in that. They were very, they're very quiet. It, it wasn't sort of a muted, it was, it was too quiet. I, I think they've been a bit higher in the mix and a bit clearer, perhaps a bit sharper. They, they would have been, yeah, pro probably not phenomenal, but I, I would have quite liked them as it was. I thought they were, I thought they were solid, but I think, I, I, didn't, they didn't do too much for me, and again, I think the mix really, really negatively impacted them in this one. Alright, lighting is kind of horrible right now, but uh, I was just back to the song, and I realized what it was about the vocals that really felt so off to me, and it, it was the mix is just not perfect on them, but they really lack a lot of power as well, in, in a lot of, um, 
in in a lot of songs by uh, both Destiny on and and uh, struggling to speak again uh, and Wagamama Rakia. Uh, her, her vocals do have a lot of power in them. There's there's a lot of force behind them, and this one it just it felt it felt like there wasn't much energy there, and I I think that. I didn't notice it on that first listen because I was just focusing on all the different elements. But once this and again, it hit me. And uh, yeah, if I think if there had been more power and more force behind the vocals, I would have really liked the song. As it is, I, I still I enjoy it. But geez, it's not it's not quite there. And I really wish it was. But uh, yeah, I just I realized that's something I should edit in what it was that was messing with them for me because if my commentary on that I I I need I, I needed to go back and uh, add this in uh at least for myself uh but anyways yeah I'll let y'all go back to the uh, video now yeah that's I guess I guess that's it with that um what else was there the uh I guess I'll talk about like the uh the choir and the other symphonic elements were quite nice I love that kind of stuff in music it was well done, then nothing too crazy with it. It was about what I would expect from, I guess, this style of music. Although, I, I haven't heard anything else in this style, but... So, sort of that style of, I guess, symphonic elements. It Pretty straightforward for it, but quite nice. Um, the electronic elements were really cool. Uh, there was that one part that went almost dubstep, I want to say. Everything else was... I don't, I don't know what sort of sub-genre of electronic to say, because I, I really only listen to, like, synthwave and dark synth and stuff like that, for the most part. So, I, I don't, I'm not too familiar with the various sub-genres of electronic. But it, it was something else. I, I quite like that. It was, um, not quite the spice on top, but I enjoyed it. I, I think, I think I partially really enjoyed uh, the electronics and the symphonic element, elements. I am struggling to speak right now. I think I really enjoyed those working together. Because uh, earlier today I was listening to, uh, I mentioned Keijin Church. I actually got to look up the title of the song. Because it's absolutely insane. And I, I'm not going to be able to say it without looking it up. Yeah, it is Balag Gegbug Ibgabiug Gixkir Degabsie Fuik. And I'll put in a Spotify screenshot to prove that I'm not making that up. That is the actual song name. 18 minutes long, I would describe it as classical synth metal, and I believe this is a side project by the guy who does Master Boot Record, which also has a lot of the similar elements, uh, so just that, that kind of idea, I, I, re I really like that, so it was nice to just find a bit more of that, um, there, there's the bass that appeared for a moment, that was really nice, I wish there had been more of that, um, but yeah, on the whole, uh, I should talk about the drumming real quick, the drums in this pretty simple. They sounded nice. I preferred the ones that didn't, they probably were, I guess, synthesized drums as well, but they sounded like a proper drum and not an electronic drum, which I guess in a way is its own proper drum, because when you, you gotta play them both, and like, if you're doing it all like you mean you gotta compose everything, but I'm, I'm talking like an actual drum kit, drum set, whatever. Uh, I think I'm digging myself into a hole with this one. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was nice. Nothing too fancy, but it, it was solid. But on the whole, this was a solid track. I, I would have wanted it to be a bit more. The ending was definitely a little rough. But I I think I think the energy, the vibe, uh, what it was going for was phenomenal. I, just, I don't think it quite reached it. Uh, really, the one change I would have made is I wish there had been some metal elements in there. I think that would have really tied everything together, uh, at least for me. As it was, solid track, very, very great idea of what it was trying to do. The, um, the, uh, there's a word I'm trying to grab, I can't get it. The execution felt a little flat, but I'll definitely be listening to this some more. I don't know if this one's going to grow on me or if it's going to sort of stay on the side of like, yeah, solid track, nothing too fancy. But... It, it was solid. I, I'll definitely have to check out more stuff by uh, this Void Morning Finale fella. And I, I guess I'll have to check out more stuff just from the game as well. Uh, if I can clear up some space on my phone or if I ever 
get another phone, I'll probably install the game and give it a shot. Um, but yeah, that was decent. I will say that it was decent. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is time to... Uh, Y'all know what it is now. It is time to pick the next reaction. So let's get that going again. Shorthand for everything. There's a few typos this time. But let's give it a spin. See what we get. And we have... Okay, I'm happy about this one. Hwasa 3. That is the only one. Y'all can see it. Hwasa 1, apostrophe, and then Hwasa, I guess would be the way to pronounce that too. Hwasa 3, that's one of the ones shared with Loco. That is... It's either Lemon or somebody. I think it's somebody, but it's, um... It's whatever one was released second. Uh, I don't I don't know which, but it's it's one of those two tracks. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. That is um some K-pop. It's been it's not been a little while since we've done some K-pop. We already reacted to Blackpink last video, but uh yeah, Hwasa reaction. That's quite nice. Um yeah, nothing else to say on this. That was fun to check out, uh, but nothing too fancy. Uh, but anyways, that is going to do it. So thank you for watching. Be sure to like if you liked, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment down below with your thoughts on the track, any feedback or criticism, or anything you want me to react to, which I will get to in three months, maybe. <laughs> um, in the description, link to... I, I, it wasn't a music video, it was like audio visualizer, I guess, link to that, so you can check it out, support the artist, link to my Discord server, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify playlist of all the songs I've reacted to, at least the ones up on Spotify, and my official link to you, which has all my other stuff in it, in case any of that interests y'all. Anyways, like I said, that's going to do it, so once again, thank y'all for watching, and until next time, I'll be seeing ya.